Yeah, hi everyone. So let's create series SDTM dot CM specification. So as the name suggests, SDTM is nothing but my study data tabulation model. CM is the concomitant medication. Sub CM is the supplemental qualifier for concomitant medication, and it is used to relate non-standard information to a parent domain. So any questions which are non-standard and which cannot fit into the parent domain, which is CM here, you can add it into the sub CM. ADM is nothing the analysis data model, and ADCM is the analysis data set for the concomitant medication. Now here the structure of CM is one record per subject per event. So say one subject is having four to five medications. So that patient or the subject will have around four to five events. The sort order of CM is the unique subject ID and CM sequence, which is nothing but your unique identifying uh, record variable. So here I'm following the SDTM IG version 3.4 uh, final version and the Adam IG version 1.3 final version. You can easily download download it from the cdesk.org um, website and it's a very user friendly and the self-explanatory process of logging in and creating your account and you just give your mobile number and through one OTP you can, you can uh, get into the CDISC website and you can download all these guidelines versions which are very easily available uh, for the public media. So you can go through it and uh, you can go through these uh, SDTM IG guidelines. Hi everyone. So let's see how to create the specifications for the CM domain, which is the concomitant medication. So I have data set name, variable order, variable name, variable label, then variable type, length, display format, then core, code list, then origin, CRF pages, source derivation and the comments. So we'll begin with the uh, study ID. So we have the study ID domain and the unique subject identifier. So this variable type, it comes from the uh, CDISC guidelines and the variable name, the variable label and the variable type. So these three columns, they usually come from the uh, CDISC guidelines, which are mandatory to follow as per what they have mentioned as to what kind of variables, names and the labels that you need to specify. The variable length is a free test where you can uh, assign the length of that specific variable as per the requirement of the specific study. So say in a specific study, you have the study identifier is a bit longer. So I need around 60 or 70 or as the variable length. So you can change this. Then if you want to specify any format, and these are the required variables then uh, study id and domain they are the specific code list that you need to mention as per the series guidelines then the origin you need to understand first whether the study id is coming directly from the protocol the our domain is coming from the assigned because we are just assigning that domain equal to cm and we are deriving uh, the specific variable unique subject identifier which is a, nothing but a concatenation of the study id site id and the subject id right so it's very essential to understand the difference between protocol assigned and derived so then coming back to this uh, identifiers where I have the sequence number so every event uh, that happens or recorded in that specific uh, clinical trial you will be having a specific sequence number which is my CM sequence any group ID if I want to uh, say for example a patient is having different kind of concomitant medications related to the same disease so in those situations you will assign this group id so that specific uh, patient number will have a unique group id but their sequence number can be different and their concomitant medications can be different so in those scenarios this group id becomes quite essential to identify and relate a specific record right so you can mention number then character then required and permissible and this usually comes from the crf page and the draw sponsor defined variable right then we'll come back to this reported name of drug then reported name then 
standardized medication then category and the sub category so these usually are the crf uh, text values which they are uh, mentioned and the data comes from the crf that has been captured so these are the uh, name of the drug or the name of the medication that a patient had and this is the modified reported name the standardized medication name it usually comes from the medra coding that is your who dictionary which the medical coder will provide you the category and subcategory for medication if it is mentioned in crf then you can keep these two variables if it is not mentioned in that specific crf need not mention it so it depends on the requirement and the availability of data you can modify these list of variable names but these are the common uh, list of variable names that are usually present in the cm specs so these are the required where you need uh, the medication name or the treatment name uh, that has been given so this is very required others are all permissible it may be present or it may not be present and this is the matra which comes from the cmd code and the category and the subcategory they usually come from the crf pages if you have any uh, derivation you can always write here or if you have any comments you can always mention here so we'll now come back next to uh, the CM pre-specified occurrence completion status reason medication was not collected indication uh, medical medication class medication class code so here uh, these medications whether they were pre-specified and if it was pre-specified and if the patient has consumed that medication then uh, you will mention that occurrence equal to yes so if these two data will be present together remember one thing is pre-specified is there then the occurrence has to be either yes or no right so the length you can always um, control uh, since it's not the uh, mandatory as to you have to put only this much length or that much length so based on the availability of data it's a free test where you can uh, modify the length so here i have put as 200 but we need only length as one right because the values for these specific variables will be either n or y as per the code list right and again whether the reasons uh, was done or not done so you'll have a completion status whether this concomitant medication was completed or not completed so those kind of status uh, decision will be measured as done or not done which is nd right so the reason the medication was not collected you can specify uh, in this specific variable cm rest nd because since it's a free test now so the indication and the medication class and the medication class code so remember one thing medication class and medication class code will come from your who degree which is metra so here i have this uh, cmd code uh, cm class cm class cd so these variables they usually come from the medical or the medical coder will provide you from the who dictionary and it's not the job role of a programmer or a biostatistician to do the uh, medical coding so these will be always be provided by the medical coder and uh, since we are assigning so this will always be the assigning kind of variables right so next we come to the other variables so say any medication uh, that you is mentioned in this particular data or specs you will always have the dose dose description what was the unit it was confirmed whether form whether it's um, liquid tablet powder or any kind of form that you see the frequency like how many times it was taken during the day whether one time in a day or twice daily or weekly once or monthly uh, monthly twice or monthly thrice so those kind of frequency uh, interval will be mentioned here the total dose uh, will be mentioned like say for example how much daily dose was consumed by that specific patient while consuming this specific medication right so that total dose has to be mentioned then the intended dose regimen 
route of administration whether it was orally taken if it was a tablet if it's a liquid kind of a medication whether it was given through injection or it was taken with water or something like that so those kind of information will be mentioned here then the reason for those adjustment then the reason the intervention was discontinued so these uh, information is a uh, detailed information regarding the medication so you know the medication name then we will come back to the other parameters of that medication whether the dose was uh, in liquid form tablet form how it was taken orally whether the what was its unit so all those kind of information will be mentioned here and uh, these are the unit form then frequency and route so these are the code list which are the standard values as per the CDIS guidelines which you can mention here then we'll come back next to the visit number visit plant study day of uh, visit so that particular medication was taken at which visit uh, whether it was taken at visit 1, visit 2 based on the clinical trial planned uh, study events. So those specific visit number, visit name and the planned study day of visit you can mention here. right? So then next we'll come back to the planned order of element within ARM. So these are the standard variables that you need to mention. EPOC is uh, usually designed as per the CDIS guidelines which you will have in each and every clinical trial. The EPOC will be uh, explained to you by the principal investigator or the any doctor or the clinical trial who is conducting that. So those information you can get it from them. Then these are the start date of medication when was the medication ended then the study day of collection then study day of start of collection medication then study day of end of medication then what was the duration of medication so how long those medication was taken right so this is nothing but your start from the medication that you have to subtract from the end of uh, medication so that's how you get the duration and this is a study day of start of medication remember one thing um, the formula of deriving the duration which is end minus start is not going to be the same across all same um, various uh, clinical trials you may have some partial dates or you may have some only year kind of information you may not have the entire date information right so say some events will have only the month and year so how do you calculate the duration based on the partial dates or imputation of the dates doing so all those things if they are mentioned in the protocol that this is how we are going to impute the missing values of the partial dates those kind of uh, strategies that you have to consider here so if it is mentioned in statistical analysis plan then you have to follow that then these are the iso 8601 the date format that you need to mention as per your series guidelines any information or any derivation uh, that you would like to uh, inform here that uh, since the dates were missing the partial dates were imputed by so and so method or it was replaced by the first day of month or it was replaced by the 15th day of the month it depends on what your statistical analysis plan says then next we'll come back to your start relative to reference period then start relative to reference time point so these are the reference uh, periods and the reference time point that you need to mention if uh, these information are collected on CRF if these information are not collected on CRF then you can skip this variables names it's not mandatory to mention these variable names if there is no data in the specific CRF or in the database if you have the database and if these variables are designed in the CRF then it becomes essential to capture those data and then that's how it comes to the specs creation if it is not mentioned in the crf uh, design then you can skip this from the cf specs but these are the mandatory uh, columns that are allowed in the cm specs creation right so this is how you create the um, cm specs creation and uh, the concomitant medication is also an important part of 
the clinical trial where if any patient is having any um, symptoms then what medication was given to that patient uh, for so that the patient becomes uh, normal so in those kind of situations this concomitant medication becomes quite essential usually you will have any listings or any kind of um, tables if there are any but mostly generally you will see only the listings kind of parameter so this is how you create the specifications for the parent domain which is cm yeah hi everyone so we'll see supplemental cm uh, specs creation so we have data set name variable order variable name variable label then variable type variable length then uh, display format core code list then origin then crf pages so send derivation and next the comments so this supplemental cauliflower uh, data set relates to those kind of information which are non-standard and cannot be fit into the parent domain which is cm so these are the standard uh, variable names that we usually keep in the supplemental uh, cauliflower kind of uh, data set so we have study id then related domain then unique subject id then identifying variable then identifying variable value then qualifier labelable then qualifier uh, variable label then what is its value what is its origin whether it's crf or derived and the evaluator which is either the investigator or the sponsor so we have these are the standard labels uh, which are as per the cdisc guidelines then the type and uh, length also uh, they are specific to the data requirement so, so say the variable type uh, will always be uh, uh, mandatory as to put it across as per the cdisc guidelines whereas the variable length you can control uh, as per the data requirement so say for example you have a study id or uh, which is around say maximum 50 as the length so you have uh, the unique subject id which is the combination of the study id site id and subject id so you can always control this variable length so you can put 100 if you need or if you can put it as 60 based on the data that is captured in that specific clinical trial so here i'll keep it as uh, standard 50 then the core is my required expected and uh, kind of uh, variables these are and these are the code list uh, which are as per your uh, cdisc guidelines as to what values they need to be uh, considered so here uh, say i have the origin which is protocol assigned derived is nothing but i am doing the formula or i am calculating it or i am deriving it in concatenation of study id site id and subject id that is why it is the unique subject id now these are the assigning i am just assigning this uh, data set name as um, related to parent domain which is cm now this study id it directly comes from the protocol that is why the origin is from the protocol so you need to understand very carefully as to what is the values the variables can take the origin value so you should understand the difference between protocol assigned derived is nothing but any formula assigning is you are just taking from the parent domain which is cm and you are just simply assigning it to your supplemental qualifier data set now these are my um, values which are related to the crf domain like say for example q name q label and q value so these uh, are the questions name and these are the questions label uh, which have been assigned and those are the respective values for these specific questions so those kind of information uh, they usually typically come from crf that is why it has mentioned crf as the origin and if you want to be a very particular or meticulous or you want to be a very detailed kind of orientated uh, specs you want to create so you can specify also the crf page number generally most people they don't write the crf page number but it's always better to write so that you come to know whether this specific question name or the question label 
or this specific uh, non standard information is coming from which specific crf page number so you can always mention that and then you can write the source or derivation as to uh, refer to that sjtm annotated crf page number right and the uh, values related to your q origin or the evaluator these usually come from the assigned whether these are crf or derived and whether uh, it's uh, mentioned by the investigator or the sponsor and you can always mention uh, any comments that you have uh, say for example you want to mention a specific comment uh, related to uh, any non standard information which is not finalized and it is still under discussion with the client or something like that so if you want to keep things hold on until the final version releases so those kind of comments you can mention here so that you can refer that and then you can finalize this specific uh, supplemental cm specs creation so this is a very simple and a very basic understanding of creating the supplemental specifications for the cm domain so here i would like to thank each and every one of you for watching my videos and stay tuned for upcoming videos thank you